they play it, I want us to just worship the Lord. The whole time they're playing that chorus, just worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Give Him praise in this place this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I get joy today when I think about what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for every good and perfect gift. Thank God for your blessing. Thank God for your healing. Thank God for your provision. get joy in remembering all of the wonderful things that God has done in our life we're in trouble we're in trouble if we can't if man we can't get joyful thinking about what he's done amen life can throw you a lot of curveballs people can fail you things can go wrong but Jesus never fails Jesus, always there. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And above all, if we are saved by his grace, hallelujah, we know we can handle anything that life comes. Let's ask God to bless this day. I feel his presence already in this room. We want him to just anoint every class and all that's to be done today. Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, for this opportunity to be together, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to get into your word today. Anoint every teacher, every class, every person, Lord, that is coming today or here already. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that you would just loose the revelation of your word today. We need it, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We're going to dismiss our classes. The rest of you that are remaining here, if you would stand or remain standing. to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, I direct your attention today. Going back into this theme text for our series on perfecting holiness, four pillars of membership. Part number two, Second Corinthians chapter number six. Good to see everyone here today in the house of the Lord. Beginning with the 14th verse. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Notice all those things are contrasted. For ye are the temple of the living God. And as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore? Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. A lot of things compared and contrasted in those verses of Scripture. The Lord leaves us no question, no doubt of these having distinct differences that they cannot abide together. 
but they must be chosen one over the other. Amen. And then knowing we have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. How do you do that? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord. We receive it today. We receive it with gladness. We receive it with a submitted heart. Why don't you just bow your head to the Lord and say, I submit to you today, God. I submit to you today, God. I yield myself to you today, God. I need you, Jesus. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I want to say again at the onset of this uh, lesson, as I have in all of these lessons uh, that I've remembered to do so, that this is a special series for the church. This is a special series for First Apostolic Church of Stager. And uh, the Lord um, has been bringing us on a journey, I believe, that uh, will forever alter the course of our church, building on our foundation and helping us reach into uh, into the future. We believe that God gave us some understanding of the need for a better process. We call it the community process, and it is a way to help us disciple people from outside, no knowledge of God whatsoever, all the way through five steps to becoming leaders in the church, mature leaders in the church. Someone wants to be a leader at First Apostolic Church of Steger, there must be some things that they have um, believed, made up their mind they're going to believe, some things that they are going to stand with us in agreement on, and uh, that helps the church to be strong. Amen. We, we cannot have uh, multiple views pertaining to these things as if everyone's perception or ideas are uh, have standalone value, but we want to be a church in agreement and unified. And uh, so we have begun with principles of doctrine. And uh, these doctrinal points that we taught um, uh, in those lessons are foundational principles of apostolic truth. We moved on to the understanding of the need for spiritual gifting. And that first apostolic church is not led by the flesh, it's not led by talent alone, men's abilities will falter and fail, but spiritual gifts, gifts that have been given to us by the Holy Spirit, these are not manufactured. These are not uh, given by man to man. Amen. But these are from God who has poured it out. Now we're looking at the perfecting of holiness. Amen. When we say that we are an apostolic Pentecostal church, we are a holiness church. We believe in holiness of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the Spirit and uh, of the flesh. We want to work out, perfect holiness in the fear of God. And uh, then when we finish this uh, series here in a few services, then we'll move on to stewardship, believing that God is invested within all of us, uh, things that we are to be good stewards of. And uh, when we finish this membership series, we're going to hand out papers again. And uh, we're going to let you look over these papers and sign these papers and uh, say, I want to be a member of First Apostolic Church. Then the series at some point in the future on leadership, where we teach how we lead, how we believe leadership is to uh, take place around here, uh, is, is, is going to follow. And it's very important. So I said all that to say that uh, this series may uh, hit people at different places in your walk with God. If you are new, if you are just young in the Lord, and as we would say, uh, these things that we are teaching may be a little strong meat for you. And uh, please uh, just be open to hearing the word of the Lord and allowing the spirit of truth that you have received if you've received the Holy Ghost. If you have not yet received the Holy Ghost, that's what you need to do right now. You need to get the Holy Ghost. You need to speak with other tongues as the spirit of God gives the utterance. Because uh, without the Spirit of Christ, the Bible says we are none of His. And uh, we believe, as we have taught in the doctrinal uh, uh, portion, that uh, it is the desire of God to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh and uh, that uh, it is still something that is uh, preached and believed and necessary. Amen. It's necessary. 
uh, because only when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost can the truths of God's Word begin to come alive in your heart. And so I am encouraging you, amen, to seek the Lord, repent of your sins if you've never repented, get water baptized in Jesus' name if you've never done so, and allow Him to fill you with His Spirit, amen, and then we receive the spirit of truth, the Bible says, that will lead us and guide us into all truth. So, again, this series hits people uh, at different places. There are all kinds of people here uh, on any given Sunday from people that are checking the church out for the first time, people that have only been here a few uh, services, some that have only been here a few years, uh, others that, uh, you know, just just you and I... Um, want to get on the same page, the church wants to be on the same page, but we understand uh, if you do not receive everything today, uh, no judgment zone. We're not going to be uh, beating you up over the head. We're just going to encourage you to grow in the Lord. That goes also for everyone watching us online as well. Amen. You may hear some things online today that's not taught in your local church or in the weeks to come, and uh, we are just encouraging you as well to open your Bible and uh, to, to go along with us in the truths and, and just allow God to speak to your heart as well. Amen. We see how verse number one of chapter seven ends, perfecting holiness. And how is perfecting holiness to be done? In the fear of God. The fear of of God is something that is so necessary. You and I will never go very far with God if we don't fear the Lord. Amen. We may serve Him out of His blessings. We may serve Him because of others' example. Um, there may be multiple reasons why somebody walks with God for a while and never develops the fear of God, but at some point, you and I must come to this great recognition that there is a holy, sovereign God that has a right to save us and put demands on us. That sovereign God, this awesome, holy, separate God, does not just have to accept anybody and everybody and anything and everything. That He is not just some, you know, uh, heavenly grandfather up there that just kind of winks at his grandchildren whenever they make continually mistakes and says, oh, it don't matter what they're doing. I've, I've already determined I'm going to save them and however they want to live is up to them and, and uh, I'll just see them someday when I call them home. No, we serve a holy God. We serve a God that from Genesis to Revelation is shown to be holy. He is shown to be feared, that um, uh, people that served him feared him, feared him with this godly fear. Amen. We can say it's a type of holy reverence, and that would be true, to give God, amen, complete and total reverence where his word uh, just stops all question. On our behalf. Amen. If God says it, I believe it. If He says it and I don't believe it, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep studying it. I'm gonna keep reading it. I'm gonna keep praying about it until I can say yes and amen to the word of God. I want to be able to say yes, amen to the whole counsel of God. Not just pick and choose certain things about Christianity that I like. Amen. Now, I want to preface and say, I don't believe that I've understood it all. I don't believe that I teach everything perfectly. I, I don't believe that, uh, the, that uh, we have not made mistakes or maybe overemphasized some things, underemphasized other things, please. We're just human people just trying to serve this wonderful God and do our very best. However, whole denominations, whole churches have... Um, ha have built themselves upon their own petty ideas, their own little ideas or little doctrines to the exclusion of others. As, as I mentioned uh, back on the first pillar, I talk with, talked with somebody one time who said that uh, they cannot recall 
the last time that their particular pastor of a denominal church had ever even addressed the book of Acts. He'd never even preached to them, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter number 2. They couldn't recall ever hearing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost poured out on the day of Pentecost. That was something that uh, they just, you know, ha had no understanding of because their church was afraid of that doctrine. If there are things in the Bible that we're afraid of, we need to bend our knee before God and prayerfully say, God, you are the giver of every good thing, every good and perfect gift. I want to receive this. I want to have an understanding of this. How do I apply this in my life? How can I be pleasing to you? But holiness will never, ever take deep root in you and I if there isn't a fear of God. This needs to come to everyone by revelation. You can read about it and just overlook it, but whenever you get a revelation of the fear of God, it'll transform you altogether. Amen. The first prayer that a new believer or a mature believer who's desiring to perfect holiness is, God, I want to properly fear you. I want to properly fear you. Moses taught a song to Israel following the Red Sea crossing and their victory over Pharaoh. And the song includes this question, Exodus 15 and 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Who is like unto thee? Verse number 11. There's power in asking the right questions. Moses is asking the right questions there, and those questions are helping to steer Israel as they learned this song, and it became something they sung regularly. It steered them to the correct answer of who their God was. We know they struggled with that because when Moses went up to Mount Sinai and was there for 40 days in the glory of God, they got a little antsy and went to Aaron and said, hey, we don't know what's become of Moses. We need to know who our God is, and uh, we, we need you to make us a God. And you know the story. Um, Aaron had them strip off all their, all their Egyptian gold and all of that. He fashioned a calf out of it and said, this, this is your God that brought you out, out of Egypt. And Moses came down about that time once they had begun to feast and to revel and uh, he destroyed that God, ground it up in powder and threw it in their water, made them drink it, and uh, completely, uh, com completely brought them back, amen, to true north about who their God is. Moses is asking these questions, but he already knows the answer. He's doing so to make a point. The point is that there is no other God lowercase g, that compares to the true God. There's no other God. There's none other that's glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, and doing wonders. The writer of Hebrews in chapter number 12, verse 28 and 29 says, Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably. All right? We need this grace. We need this empowerment. We need this help so that we can serve God acceptably. How do we serve God acceptably? With reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen. I wonder how often that characteristic of God is preached in many churches. I wonder if people want to imagine a fire that's raging. We often think of that as being in anger. They lit a fuse and got angry. No, it's talking about a holy God that will not allow anything unholy to stay untempered around Him. Amen. Amen. The fire that is used to temper the steel so that it can become a sword the fire that's used to burn up the dross and all that's unclean and the gold so that it can become purified. Our God is that. 
You get close to this God and you will change to become more like this God. Think about that moment when Moses, before he went back to Egypt, was there in the wilderness and he saw the bush that was burning but not being consumed. Think about him walking towards to see that sight, getting there close step by step until the voice of God spoke to Moses from that bush saying, Moses, take off your shoes for the ground upon which you stand is holy ground. I don't know how close he was. We, we can't even guesstimate. Was he 10 yards from the, from the burning bush? Was he 15 yards? I don't know, but there was at one point where when his foot came down, he had crossed a boundary. At that step, he was now in the presence of God. He is now in a place where it required of him to do what was not required previously. And that was, take off your shoes. Now you are in the presence of God. Now the the holiness of God is is making demands of you, Moses. And that is so true even for us today. The holiness of God makes demands of us. To be near unto God, to want to be drawn close to God, it can make a demand of us. If Moses hadn't taken off his shoes, I wonder what would have happened. Well, I think he'd have been struck down. I don't think he could have just continued to walk up to that bush with his sandals on saying, I don't care about this. I don't want the hot sand to burn my toes. God had a reason for asking or commanding Moses to take off his shoes. We see other instances, and this isn't in my notes today, but there are other instances in the Bible where people got too close to holy things in an unauthorized manner. You you remember, you remember Yuza whenever they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant back and they had it on that cart pulled by those oxen and it came to that place in the threshing floor and the Bible says the cart jostled and Yuza stretched forth his hand to touch the Ark and what happened? He was dead. He died. He wasn't supposed to touch that ark. Amen. There was a right way to carry the holy things of God. Amen. It was to be brought upon the shoulders of the priests, not upon a cart, but they hadn't taken the right time to look into it until a man died. And then suddenly they said, hey, let's let's study this thing. There's a right way to do this. There's a holy way to do this. And we can't just do it any way we want and ask God to accept it. Because God let Uzzah die. King Uzziah. King Uzziah was lifted up in pride after serving the Lord so many years and being faithful. And he went into the temple. He shouldn't have done that. He began to offer incense. He shouldn't have done that. He was, he was, he was a king, but he was not a king and priest after the order of Melchizedek. He was just a king. And he thought because he was used of God in so many other things that this would be all right. And he went in there and offered incense. He didn't die, but he was struck with leprosy. And he was removed from his throne and spent his remaining days uh, apart from society. It was the sons of Aaron, the Bible says, that offered unto God fire that was not approved. It was not the right kind of fire. We don't know exactly what they did wrong there whether they kindled a fire outside of the, of the brazen altar and brought it in, and, uh, but it was, it was not the right kind of fire. And the Bible says God struck them down. They were Aaron's sons. And you know it was the Aaron's lineage that was to be the high priests. And they were his firstborn. They were the first that would have been in line and God removed them so that he could make a point. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. I, I, I feel today so strongly that, that I, I really I can't go further into a lot of these applications until we understand the basic principles of these things that challenge us. We're not going to get rid of the filthiness of the flesh unless we have a fear of God. We're not going to cleanse ourselves based upon these promises unless we have a fear of God, a consuming fire. Billy Graham said, only when we understand the holiness of God will we understand the depth of our sin. 
Amen. Amen. I believe the closer you and I get to the holiness of God, the more we see the unholiness within us. Whether we've lived for God for two months or 50 years, there's a lot yet in us, amen, that can be sanctified and transformed. None of us have arrived. We're all on a journey. Amen. But we're not going to truly understand the depth of our sin from a distance. People that don't like holiness, the reason why is because they like sin. <laughs> if you don't want to... If you don't want holiness in your life, and, and that can be defined as anybody's definition of holiness, let's put it like that. If somebody doesn't want to be holy, if somebody wants to, you know, say we're not going to have any holiness at all in our church, any standard at all in our church, well, what are you trying to hide? What are you scared of? Why do you want to hold on to that which would keep you from drawing close to God? Amen. Amen. That's our desire. Amen. Holiness needs to be taught from a perspective that says, I want to get close to God. I want to be closer to God than I've ever been before. And whenever you begin to drift in your holiness, what you're saying is, is there's some things I want to hold on about myself, about what I think and what I desire, and His holiness is starting to heat that up, and I don't like it. He's pointing it out. His light is shining in me, and I don't like what He's... I don't want him. I don't want him to deal with that in my life. Apostolic author, Pastor David Houston, said the word holy is used more than any other term in the Bible to describe the moral and ethical attributes of God. To grow into his holiness, we must understand these attributes and embrace them as our highest values. We must reach for them with great intensity and once obtained, hold fast to them with unyielding devotion. Holiness means a number of things. Holiness in Scripture means being pure, being purified. Amen. Purified, that means to be holy. We rid ourselves of all corruption and uncleanliness and anything that would cause us to be impure in thought or word or deed. There is, amen, pure thoughts and there are pure deeds and there are pure words as well as impure thoughts, words, and deeds. It means to be pure. Holiness is, is a purification, a sanctification process. Holiness means to be separated from the common. This means that to be holy, there are some thoughts, words, practices, and people that we will need to separate ourselves from. Amen. Amen. You'll find less and less in common with the world and with worldly friends or worldly connections whenever you grow in holiness. You won't laugh at their jokes anymore. You won't want to partake in, in, in their lifestyle choices anymore. You just you begin to realize, I'm, I'm different now. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm being separated from, from sin. I'm being separated from the common. Holiness means being dedicated to God and His purposes. Amen. God is separate from us. And, and uh, whenever we are growing in holiness, we are coming into that union. Amen. We're separating ourselves unto God. We're available to Him. We're committed to do the work that He is setting before us. Holiness means that we are different. We, we're not ashamed to be different. We are unconventional in a lot of practices. We're not, we're not politically correct in the way that we view things. We don't just believe everything that everybody believes. We don't, we're not afraid of standing out in a crowd. When you are truly, amen, maturing in the holiness of God, you, you, you kind of lose sight of the fact that, uh, uh, that, you're, that, that you are different from other people. And the men, what I mean by that is, let's just say, uh, standards of dress begin to, 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 to be something that, uh, uh, that you're practicing, and you get to the point where you don't even think about it anymore. When you were a new Christian, you used to, 
used to think about, oh my, everybody's probably noticing the fact that, that I'm not wearing all this jewelry anymore. That Everybody's probably noticing the fact that I don't have all this mascara on anymore. Everybody's noticing the fact that I'm not wearing all these muscle shirts anymore and tight jeans anymore. Everybody's noticing the fact that, that I'm not going to all the bars anymore. They're, they're, probably, they're probably thinking about that, but as you grow in holiness, then you stop looking at yourself in that way anymore. Yeah. I mean, your, your closet looks different. Your, your friends group looks different. And you've gotten accustomed. It don't bother you if somebody says, well, why do you wear dresses all the time? Why, why, why do you have long uncut hair? Why, why, why are these? You don't even think about it. Well, I'm closer to God. I'm, I'm drawn to the Lord. We're going to look at all those things uh, in, a, in, a, in, in next upcoming sessions. Holiness means I'm living within a set of boundaries. Some might call it a prison. Other people might look at it as, as a safety zone. Amen. Amen. We've got a little dog at our house, and uh, he's up in age now. But whenever he was much younger, he didn't like to stay in the yard. And uh, we hated to have to always keep a leash on him uh, every time he needed to go out. And uh, so not too many years ago, my wife and I bought one of those invisible fences. And uh, we 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 could stretch out the boundary, and uh, we, we looked at our yard, and we said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to stretch this boundary out as far as we possibly can. We want the dog to have the most, um, uh, the, the most of our yard as he possibly can, and uh, so we put that boundary there and got the little collar, and it took some time for the, the dog to realize. Uh, the first time he got shocked, he didn't like it too much, and uh, he, he, would, he would go out the back door, and it was, it was kind of humorous. He would keep his left shoulder on the side of the house. And he would walk around the house. He had, he had a, a quarter acre of land that he was able to run around in. But he had got shocked once. And he thought, well, I'm, I, I'm not going to be shocked here. Then he started going, you know, five feet further, ten feet further, twenty feet further. And now, now he knows where his boundaries are. And, uh, but the problem was he had gotten away from us so many times. We had had to find him in, in a, you know, at the police station or the dog pound. And other people had grabbed the dog and, and, and they, they had kept him for a while. Our kids were weeping and crying. And, I, and the thought of, we don't want this dog to get hit by a car. We don't want this dog to be stolen from us. We don't want this dog to get away from us and be, you know, uh, eaten by coyotes or something like that. And so this boundary provided safekeeping for the dog. But it wasn't that we just said, oh, we'll give you a little five square foot area here that you can live. No, we made it as big as we can. I believe that when it comes to God. Amen. He's not put us in this little compartment, this little prison cell. He has a, given us a wide open space. He's given us a lot of leeway, a lot of liberty. It's a good life living for the Lord. Praise God. And the more, uh, the more that you grow in holiness and the more that you love God, actually the more that, that, the, that these things are opened up further for you, just like when you're training a child. You're training a child and you say, okay, you can ride your bike in the driveway. All right, I'll let you go down the block this far. Okay, now you can go around the block. As they mature, as, as you trust them more, you give them a, a little bit more leeway, don't you? Amen. Amen. And uh, we, we appreciate the boundaries that God has put in our life. Amen. And uh, this, these boundaries point us to the reality that there is a place for us that is separate from the world. There's a God who is separate from the world, and, and we want to be in His presence. Amen. To be a saint means to be separated, but it means more than that. The saint also is to be involved in a vital process of sanctification. We are to be purified daily in the growing pursuit of holiness. We got justified. Now we must be sanctified. R.C. Sproul writing in the holiness of God. Our desire in this series is to continually seek to be perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This not merely is not merely joining a church or fitting into some con 
some particular culture or, or, or even to please me as the pastor or elders in the church, but rather we're perfecting it in the, the fear of God, the most important reason. Proverbs 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Amen. If we want to get understanding of all of these things, we must fear the Lord and allow His wisdom to take root in our life. The per, this perfection is the restoration of man to the state of holiness from which he fell. Amen. We were created holy in the Garden of Eden, but it was sinful disobedience that caused man to fall. Holiness raises us back up. Amen. Sin always keeps us down. The love of things in this world will, will keep us down. But through Christ Jesus, we are made anew and we're restored to that image and likeness of God that we lost. Everything that Adam lost for us, Christ is restoring to us. Amen. So holiness is a restoration. Amen. It's a type of restoration. Restoration means the action of returning something to a former owner or place or condition. When something's restored, you're saying, hey, I know who this belongs to. This belongs to him. This belongs to her. When we are understanding holiness as a restoration, we are being restored to our God whom we had been separated from. Amen. Amen. We are being restored to how He made us. Amen. His identity. That's, that's what's so important. The condition that He designed for us. The place that He called us to. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Question mark, question mark. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. That's a holiness verse. Praise God. I'm being restored. My body is being restored. What is my body supposed to be? The temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is not just my own way of expressing vanity and pride and, you know, dressing myself up this way or the other to get your attention. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what it was created for. When I'm being restored to God, that's what's happening. I'm being more, amen, concerned about being His than being my own. Because I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. Who's that speaking to? The saved. If you're not saved today, the, the, the purchased price has already been paid, but you haven't sealed the deal yet until you've repented of your sins and gotten born again. None of these things apply to you if you're not saved today. We're not interested in anybody trying to take on some kind of new lifestyle of holiness inwardly and outwardly if they're not even saved. <laughs> you can't be holy without the Holy Ghost. You can't teach holiness to somebody that doesn't have the Holy Ghost. All right? And so we, we, have to start with, we have to start with the right foundations. Amen. We're going to have to transition here in just, just a little while, but I, I want to prepare you because in our next sessions, which um, next Sunday is a very special Friends Day Sunday, and um, Helpers of Joy series continues with a, a special uh, 10 o'clock service under the direction of Brother and Sister Kidder who are going to be presenting us with their family ministry goals and, and visions and, and, uh, and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful service. And uh, then the next Sunday after that, we have Children's Weekend Revival with uh, Brother Philip Wagner. And uh, we have a very special service on the 10 o'clock service with Brother Wagner. He won't be talking to the kids. He's going to be talking to moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles about how to raise kids in, in, in the church and how to get them uh, where you want to see them growing in their walk with God. And so he's going to be teaching that. After that, then we're going to continue this series and we're going to get into modesty. We're going to talk about a missing aspect in many Christians' lives uh, is, is, is modesty. And uh, so uh, just be praying that the Lord would help us to understand modesty from two perspectives, inwardly and outwardly. But our time is up. Amen. Why don't you stand together with me today? Let's just lift our, lift our hands to the Lord again. With our hands raised, can we just thank the Lord for this invitation?
that he has called us to today, this invitation to holiness, this invitation to holiness, and this invitation to modesty. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God, you are holy. You are holy. And we want to worship you properly. We want to, we want to have the fear of the Lord. We want to be restored to you, God. We want to be restored to our proper owner, to our proper place. Amen. We want to be restored to all the things that were rightfully ours that was lost to us because of our own sin. Amen. And our own disobedience. But we thank you, Lord, today. And we ask you, God, that you would prepare our hearts. Amen. Bless this series and bless each and every one today. Amen. Put a desire in us, we ask, in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen. Take about 90 seconds or so if you want to, and then Brother Fox is going.